with the acid flow we must go and that gives us the following so non-attack controlled size and a attack controlled packet means that we're going to control this data right here. So that's ultimately going to be overwritten. And you know, it didn't really matter so much for the purpose of where the actual vulnerability is, but we just need to know that you know, some of that data, based on whatever the length is that the attacker can successfully provide, is going to be attack control. Now we move down here and we see a mem copy that's taking a hard-coded size and it's sourcing it from the reply data plus one, so that's gonna be you know, somewhere here, as long as that length was you know, essentially two or greater, then data plus one would have been attack controlled values. And it's copying that into file FH. File FH was this NFS3 FH size thing, but we're only copying NFS FH size, so therefore that is not actually going to overflow anything. It's safe. Moving on, we then pull the data from the packet again, and we run it through network two host long. So that is going to be an attacker controlled value pulled out of the packet data. And then we have a comparison of that value to this NFS3 FH size. But unfortunate for the programmers, that is an insanity check. Because we've got a integer up here, a signed integer, being used as the file FH3 length, and of course, sign sizes should signal your exploity sense. That insanity check means that if an attacker provides a sufficiently large value to be interpreted as negative, then is negative value greater than hard-coded positive value? No, it is not. So it's not going to execute this, which will reset the value down to a smaller size, and instead it will just continue on into this mem copy with an attacker controlled size, sourcing from attacker controlled data, and that's a mem copy which should signal your exploity sense. Acid source, acid length, going into a fixed size global buffer, so global buffer right here, and that's not safe. That's the common sweet potato issue of unsafe, unbounded functions. So what was the fix for this? Well, when looking at the diffs available, there is this one right here, which I can't see quite frankly what that is actually achieving. So I looked at it a couple of times and you know, I went back to the code and you know, it seems to me like it's an incidental fix. You know, first of all, there was no real buffer overflow going on there. I thought maybe it was, you know, some sort of overread protection or something like that. But again, this length check, that's not actually the length that's used in the mem copy. So, you know, let's go look at that very briefly. Uh, the definition here of the, uh, of the struct that we're looking at, the RPCT, it is being, it's using the reply. This is all, you know, part of a union. It's using the reply. Uh, it's getting the address of the zeroth entry of data. So it's getting the address of the zeroth entry of data and subtracting from the base of this structure. So basically, you know, we could say that it's, you know, four, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. So that address is going to be 24 into this definition. All right, well, so basically this address of zero minus address of base is 24 plus this, which is 32. So basically it's gonna be 56. If 56 greater than length, then error out, otherwise continue with the mem copy. So I'm assuming at this point that that's just some general NFS sanity check to make sure the packet behaves you know, somewhat the way it's supposed to, but because that length has nothing to do with mem copy, uh, this is not really a sanity check that has uh, applicability to trying to close down this vulnerability here. Instead, that should be achieved via this. So, all right, what does this sanity check do? Well, if we look at this, it's using file FH3 length, and that is still left as a signed integer. And that means that this sanity check will not actually achieve what it's trying to do. It's still an insanity check. It's basically you had an insanity check here and you introduced an extra insanity check there and it's still not going to achieve its goal, right? So if this, this file FH3 length is acid coming in from the packet, can just be set to a negative value so that it bypasses this insanity check it can be set to a negative value here. And so this is again, you know, for instance, this minus that is 24 plus 
some negative value. And if, you know, 24 plus a negative value, is that greater than length? Well, as long as, you know, length is something like 24, that will be, you know, less than that. So that will not return the error and it will continue on, use the extremely large negative value and buffer overflow via the memcopy. So this is a good example of why you always want to slaughter those signed sizes. Had they slaughtered the sign size, they would not still have an insanity check there. And so now maybe you're asking, hey Zeno, did you actually go and tell the U-Boot developers that this sanity check is not achieving its goal and this vulnerability is probably not fixed? And the answer is no, I didn't because I gotta just keep trucking and making more of these examples. But you can, and if no one else from the class does, then eventually I will go ahead and tell them. But in the meantime, maybe that's free CVE for you. You know, I don't need the CVE that bad, but maybe you want it. So maybe you should go tell them about it.